Hey, it's James from the CC Project. Um, we've been meaning to uh, talk a little bit about kick sampling and serving invertebrates in our local rivers uh, for a while now. Obviously the situation at the moment with uh, coronavirus doing, a, uh, doing the rounds, we can't really get outside and do too much. Um, so I thought instead of going to the river to do this tutorial, uh, we, would, uh, we would bring the river to me. Uh, so here I am in my back garden and I've created this magnificent river and my colleague today who's going to help me is Rowan. Rowan, do you want to say hi to mummy? Hi! Yeah. So whilst we are all on lockdown and we can't go outside too much, um, maybe you're lucky, maybe a river walk is part of your daily exercise and you might be able to do a little bit of this, obviously operating within socially uh, responsible ways and following government advice. If not, make a river in your garden like I have today. If you are out on the river, you've really got to think about a suitable site for this, especially if you're doing it with children. General rule of thumb is uh, you're looking for a shallow, gravelly area, and I'd definitely say ankle, ankle deep, uh, ankle depth maximum for smaller children. Uh, you can see here on my river, I've got this nice gravelly section here, very, very shallow, really good for kick sampling, and then I've got this deeper pool down at the bottom. Not so much. It's going to be mud collecting here anyway, so you're not actually going to get as many invertebrates living in the muddy sludge as you would in the the loose gravels and things in the shallower water. Avoid any fast flowing bits, avoid main water courses and stick to gravelly streams and things like that. Okay so there's some equipment you will need if you're doing this out on the river or in your back garden. The first thing is a fine mesh net. Um, you can, you know, obviously not everyone has a kick sampling net but you could use maybe a fish tank net or a, a rock pooling net if you've got one with a fine mesh. Uh, you could also maybe make one out of an old pair of tights or something. The next one is a collection box. Uh, you fill this with water and you're going to put your sample in there when you've collected it. Once you've got your sample you can sort it and you can put it into a compartmentalised container like that. You could use sort of Tupperwares, anything like that, anything you can separate things. You're going to want to have a good look at what you've collected. So magnifying glasses, I've got the spoons and the turkey baster there for separating your sample. And then if you're doing it in your garden, a selection of invertebrates to properly analyze. And then ID charts that are gonna help you find out what you've actually managed to catch. Again, if you're doing this at home, perhaps you can make them up yourself um, and maybe have a bit of fun uh, about some of the characteristics of the mini beasts uh, that you collect. Right, kick it down, down the river, into the net. Come on, shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. You can get in the river, you can get in the river. We're staying below ankle deep. And kick, 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 kick. We're netting, we're netting, and we're seeing what we're going to collect. You do this for a few minutes, really mix up all those boulders and all the gravel, and then you can move on and analyse what we've caught. Thank you very much, Rob. That was some good kick sampling. Okay, so what we've got here is everything we collected in the net whilst we were doing our kick sampling. Uh, so you can see there's a lot of rubble, there's a lot of stones and sediment in here, but also there's a lot of really cool invertebrates that we can have a look at. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a spoon, or you could use a turkey baster if they were actual invertebrates, and we're going to select, um, we're going to separate out the invertebrates from the sediment. So Rowan, do you want to help me out here? And we'll use a spoon to get some of these beasties out, yeah? Oh, we've got one here, and we're just going to put them in a sorting tray, and we're going to try and group them together, the ones that look sort of similar. Oh yes, that's a good one. That can probably go in there with the other man invertebrate. Oh, I've got one with lots of tails. Can you get that one out? And I'll get this one. Oh yeah. This one's got lots of tails too, so they should probably go in the same pot. Let's put them in there. And then, oh, we've got a fish. Look at that. Where should we put the fish, do you think? Right in the middle. Excellent. So that's us sorted what we've collected during the, uh, the kick sampling. And now we're gonna try and ID it, see what's actually there. And for that, we can use an ID key. Uh, if we look over here, let's have a look at the ID key, Rowan. 
Okay, so we've now sorted our collection. Our, our kick sample has been loosely grouped. We're going to see if we can ID what these things are. So we're going to use our magnifying glasses. Rowan, have you got your magnifying glass? Here. Yeah, let's get your magnifying glass. We're going to have a real close-up look of some of them. Do you want to have a look at that? Oh, I've got these ones. This one has a sort of scuba type snorkel. So I'm going to see, using my ID charts, if there's any invertebrate that might match that roughly. Shall we have a look? Are there any on here, Rowan, with maybe a snorkel? Or yours had lots and lots of legs? Which one do you think has got the most legs here? And we've gone for a freshwater crayfish, which is actually not so far from the truth. So well done, Rowan. And we go through our entire collection and we'll try and see what we've got, see if there's anything interesting. And there are websites and there are online resources that can help us do that. And just for interest, here's a couple of uh, images of some actual invertebrates we managed to sample in the Cairngorms.